Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. And listen to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 Uh-huh, I sure will. A good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Man, got a radio show. Steve Harvey got a radio show because God in the blessing business. Yeah, that's all. I'm just a recipient. Steve Harvey got a radio show because God is in the show you favor business. He showed me some favor. Steve Harvey got a radio show because God is in the forgiving business. God done forgave me thousands and thousands of times. You know, and I say that as a big number like that because it's probably true. God is a forgiving God. That's how I exist today. And that's how you exist today. And one of the things I want to remind you about even in existing today you know, Joel Osteen had a, has a book out called It's Your Time. I, I love this book. It's called It's Your Time. And that's kind of what I want to touch on today. And I want to remind you all that it's still your time. See, you know, there's, look, you know, they've got <sighs> unsuccessful people have created a lot of sayings to justify our failures as people. Well, my ship has passed. That, that, that was created by a person who did not quite make their goal in the amount of time that they had set for. So to justify it, here comes this great, seemingly very clever saying, and a lot of us adapt. Well, my ship has passed. So we adopt that. Here's another one. Well, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. That sounds good, don't it? Because they mix it up with a little bit of faith base in it. I guessed it wasn't. Well, here's another one. I guess if God wanted it for me, I'd have it. Are you serious, man? Are you serious? You're actually going to use that one to, 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 to justify where you are in life, man? That's, that's, so, that's so not the case. I want to remind everybody today that it's still your time, that, you know, your ship hasn't sailed. You didn't miss all of your opportunities. There's others. It's still your time. You know, you still got a chance. You still have a shot. Here's a good one. You still have hope. You do. All of you. As long as God is who he is, 
there's always hope for you. You can never lose sight of that. You can never let the devil win that battle, that there is no hope for you and cause you to do something that's unthinkable. I'm just going to cash in the chips. I'm going to take my life. I'm going to commit suicide. No, no, no. Wait a second. Wait a second. Are you for real? That's not God talking to you. That's something wrong, and it's not coming from him. It's still your time. You still got a chance. There's always hope. But listen to me. You got to move, and you got to move on it. So many people are not getting the full benefit of their life, and so many people are not getting all the blessings that God has for them because you keep waiting on the perfect time. Man, how many times have I heard people come to me and say, hey, man, I'm just waiting on everything to line up right, man. I'm waiting on the perfect time. to." Man, hey, can I tell you something? If I were waiting on the perfect time, I wouldn't be hardly any of the things that I've become. And one of my greatest blessings was was marrying Marjorie. I wouldn't even have married Marjorie if I was waiting on the perfect time because I had gone through what I thought was enough misery to cover my entire lifetime. And so when... I was first divorced, I, I, I just said, man, uh, it's going to be five, six years before I do this again. I said it. Two years later, I was married. But guess what, man? It wasn't the perfect time. I didn't have my ducks, all my ducks lined up in a row. It was still some things I needed to clean up. I even told her, it's some things I want to clean up out of my life before. You know, it's some. It's I, I, I want. I want. I want to make sure I got all the stars aligned up. You know, I want to. I want. I want to wait until all the ducks are in a row. I was waiting on the perfect time. If I had not stopped, and Marjorie and I had sat out and said to each other, "There'll be no perfect time," and then she said, "I'll go through with you whatever you're going through." And that was it. I took a chance. The ducks were not lined up in a row. I had a lot of baggage in my life, man. I wanted to try to clear up. I wanted to do some things financially different. I I wanted to just get rid of some residue I had in my life. She said, no, we'll do it together because ain't no perfect time. And guess what? It wasn't. So if you're out there waiting on the perfect time to do something, it may not come. There is no such thing as waiting on the perfect time. I've said this a hundred times and here comes 101. The road to success is always under construction. You ain't finna go out there and there ain't no barrels on the road. You're not going out there and not running to detour signs. You're not going out there without seeing the men working sign to, to get off. You're not going out there to see it. So guess what? Stop waiting on the, the stars. I got Man, this is the perfect time to do it now. If you're waiting on the perfect time, That could be one of your biggest problems. You're still waiting. You have got to move, and you've got to move on it, and you've got to make a decision to go now. God will get you through everything necessary for you to get through. But you can't quit, though. See, here's a a part. You can't quit. Just because the road you're on is under construction, you can't get off at the exit because you're tired of all the -the bumper-to-bumper traffic. It's that way. Get you some God. Like I said, get you some God and go on and go see what your life can be like. So stop waiting on the perfect time. Stop waiting on the stars to align themselves. You got to move and you got to move on it. Get you some God, apply some faith and get started. And remember, when you get out there coming towards your goal, the road to construct, the road to success is always under construction. If it was easy, everybody would be it. Stop expecting it to be easy. Come on out here. Get up in this thing. It's funky out here. Yeah, I got all that. It's hard out here. Yeah, I got all that. But what you want to do, man? Huh? What you want to do? You want to push your chips up to the window? It ain't time for that. You still got time. You still got a chance. There's always hope. There's always God. That's my conversation today. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your undivided attention, please? Thank you. No, put that down. No, stop. Stop all that. Thank you. Now that I have it, it's time for the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Wait a minute. Hold on one second. I said no. Uh -uh. (laughs) It's time for the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Welcome, everybody. Welcome one. Welcome all. We are here. Man, hold on, y'all, one second. Man, I ain't gonna tell your ass no more. <laughs> I said no. <laughs> Damn. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Steve Harvey Morning Show, and this is how we chose to do it this morning. The creator of reality radio, and it don't get no more real. Li- what? <laughs> You're gonna make. <laughs> I t- uh, hold on. Wait till I get off this damn radio. You just wait. <laughs> Welcome to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Shirley Strawberry. Hey, good morning, Steve. What's going on over there? <laughs> I ain't nothing happening right here. We're just being real with it. You know, Carla Pharrell. I mean, keeping it real. What's going on, Steve? Hey. Go in there and ask your mama. <laughs> <laughs> you know about that. I knew it was the kids. <laughs> Nephew Tommy. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the building. Top, top. J. Anthony Brown. What up, Mr. Harvey? What's going on, man? Yeah. What is happening? Hey, nothing, man. Everybody good? Everybody good? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. 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 How about you? Uh, I'm, I'm in good shape, man. Real good shape. Mm-hmm. Happy. Blessed. Aww. I don't want no applesauce. Mm-mm. Wait, did you just say happy? <laughs> yeah, really? I'm very happy. happy. <laughs> it's static. Listen to me. Okay. Overjoy. The key is, I'm not finna let nobody steal my joy. Okay. Amen, brother. Hello. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen again. Because there are joy thieves out there. The joy thieves are out there. They really are. <laughs> they are. They, are. <laughs> they steal a joy. Uh, man, they will Boy. steal your damn joy in a minute, man. <laughs> Boy, yeah, you know what's amazing to me? I, it's like amazing that people, people who think they can do something to you, like it's just gonna be free, you know. Like that, I'm gonna just do what I want to do to them, and it's just gonna be free. Well, I'm here to tell you, it ain't free. You gonna have to pay. Mm. Free ain't free. One way or the another. No free cost. Ooh. It does. Free ain't free. Yeah. Free cost. Yeah, you gotta spend gas to go get it. I mean, yeah. they don't deliver free to you, so you're right. Son. Free ain't free. Free ain't free, baby. Never is. <laughs> what? Mm. It's like it's almost like a d- conversation. Uh-huh. Free <laughs> You're not, not listening free. real carefully, <laughs> but if you listen real closely, it's real stupid. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what? What I? Yeah, say what now? <laughs> the sun is shining. Well, I'm glad you're happy, Steve. Yeah. That's oh, man. Good. I'm, I'm glad mm-hmm. for that myself. Always good. Had a good weekend. Played some golf this weekend. Oh. Played pretty you? good. But, you know, it's just once a couple of them swings, you would be going, what the hell did I do? Man, don't I know. Man, don't what I the know. hell did I do? <laughs> All right, coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, we're going to uh, talk to the CLO. We're going to ask the Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right now, Steve, time for Ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer in the building. This one is from Harold in Newark, New Jersey. Harold writes, I'm a 39-year-old divorced man dating a 33-year-old single mother. We started being intimate recently, and it's the best I've had in a long time. The only problem is, uh, the only problem I have is her six-year-old son that she brings on all of our dates now. I like her son, and I don't mind him tagging along at times, but not always. I have offered to pay for a sitter, but she doesn't trust anyone because of COVID. We have offered to, uh, we have to sneak around the house to have sex because her child has no boundaries. It's been a year, so can I set the boundaries? Well, you're gonna have to talk to her about it. I think you're gonna have to bring up the subject about it. That, you know, because now one thing about it, the children come with the women. So they ain't no, you, you know, and I appreciate you offering for a babysitter, but because of COVID, she don't want to do it. 
so understandable. Understandable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're gonna have to bring up the subject, and y'all gonna have to find something to work through this. I don't know if she has a relative she trusts or something like this. Or what you can do is you can order rapid COVID tests now, and you can test your babysitter or your loved one and leave them with the child. You got to do something because you can't. The, the relationship won't won't flourish without uh, private time. Mm -hmm. Has that ever it's happened to you? It's hard to build it. When a woman you were dating with kids brought their kids, brought her Everything kids has happened to me, sure. <laughs> so is that, how did that work I out just, for you? Just, I do I want to talk about it? It's what <laughs> we'll be faced with. I had so much going on in my ragged ass life. <laughs> Uh, that's why I don't think I'll ever tell the real Steve Harvey story. I'm just going to just leave mine unsaid. Everybody don't need a, 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 a biopic. Uh -uh. Okay. And I just think I'm just one of them people need to just let it go. Leave some stuff out. Oh, right. yeah, you ever just... came out with one? Ooh, now, I'm going to have to, because it's, it's going to be corny, because I'm going to have to lead all, I'm going to have to leave too much stuff out. Oh, man. And oh, then man. I'm old. Yeah, and then I'm old, so, you know, you can't, like, you know, my medical records at Forest City got burned down when the hotel got burned down with no damn computers. Oh, man. So anything so, 415, I ain't even here. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh, so, yeah. All right. We're yeah, all on. my medical records is gone. They can't find dental charts, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on. Coleman in Peoria, Illinois says, I'm a happily married man and I continue to work Monday through Thursday. One of my wife's closest friends is my coworker, and uh, she's working the same hours and days as I do now. We talked about carpooling and alternating weeks when we would drive. I talked to my wife about it and she forbid me to do it. Um, she said her friend should have come to her and asked for permission. It has created friction in their friendship, and I don't understand what my wife's problem is. What's wrong with sharing our ride to work? Hmm. Boy, are you stupid. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> sir, sir, you've formed a friendship with your wife's closest friend. Y'all have set up and contrived Y'all gonna start riding to work together. We know what you're doing, though. But ain't nobody come <laughs> we, to the wife. We know and what you're doing. Your girlfriend should have came. Her, her girlfriend should have came and said something to her. Now it's creating <laughs> friction between them. And why you think that is, though? We know what you're doing. Know what you're doing he has though. no <laughs> idea what his wife's problem is. That's so, what dog. He said. So, dog. Let me ask you a question. You and your your wife and your best friend work together. Then your wife come home and go, hey, me and Harold going to start riding to work together. Okay. Huh. Okay. We know what you doing, dog. Wait a minute. <laughs> Harold. Yeah. See how you like that. <laughs> yeah. That's all you mm -hmm. got to do, bro. Mm -hmm. All right, sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Candy in Memphis says, my son's father got married in January, but we still mess around whenever he's had too much to drink. I like to think he still has feelings for me, but I know it's the vodka. Uh, what bothers me is that my son has seen him in my bed overnight, and it could be confusing for him. He has not met his daddy's wife yet, so he's only seen me with his daddy. He's four years old, and he's going to be confused by all of this. Is it his daddy's job to explain to our son why he's still sleeping over at our house or mine? Hmm. I don't, I don't see how this is a problem that you would write me and Shirley about. I really, really don't. I, I don't really give a damn. I really don't. Uh -huh. you no, know, see, seriously, sister, you want to think that he still has feelings for you, but you know it's only when he been drinking. Yeah. Okay. Let's not blame the alcohol for every damn thing. <laughs> Blame Maybe he still seeing you because you want him to see you yeah. and you let him sleep with you. Yeah. What difference do it make who explain it to the four-year-old <laughs> when both y'all dead wrong? Mm -hmm. So what is the conversation going to be about? Because the four-year-old ain't met his new wife yet. And you know that little that little that little boy gonna say something one time when he do you ain't my mama. Yeah, and it is confusing for the four year old. Yeah, it is. you're damn yeah. right, and it's gonna be so confusing that he gonna see clarity from everybody involved, yeah. you, the husband, and the new wife. Mm -hmm. 
And you know this. So stop playing this game because you know what you're doing. Right. That's right. You want him to be confused. Hell, because you're confused. Yeah. It's confusing to us. (laughs) (laughs) And he will tell it. (laughs) And we good and grown. Yeah. And... uh, all right, uh, Sean in Los Angeles says, uh, I'm 40 years old and my wife and I have been married for three years. She's 42, she has two children from her second marriage and I have one son from my first marriage. I recently met her first husband, he wished me luck because he said I married a cheater. He said they were married four months, she cheated, so he divorced her. I have no way of knowing if he's a liar or if this is true. Should I ask her about it or let it go? Ooh. What kind of conversation you have in? With her, with her ex about your current mm-hmm. dog, he shady and you shady. I wish you would come up me and say something like that. I knock your ass out, <laughs> knock your monkey ass right out. All right, CLO, we gotta go. Thank you for that, though. Coming up next, church complaints with Reverend Motown and Deacon Def Jam. Right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up in entertainment news, we are sending our deepest, deepest condolences out to the friends and family of the legend Biz Marquee. Uh, We truly lost a hip hop legend when we lost Biz Marquee on Friday. We're praying for the Hall family. And uh, also in entertainment news, on a lighter note now, we'll tell you about the number one movie in America. We'll talk about it all at the top of the hour, but right now it is Monday, so you know what that means. It's time for Church Complaints with Reverend Motown and Deacon Def Jam. We marching on to Zion. That was an A selection from moi. Yeah. Uh, That's French for myself. Okay. I didn't know you were bilingual, oh, okay. Pastor. Wow. <laughs> no, I speak two languages, surely. Oh. Uh, my so bad. There. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Questioning my sexuality has never been an issue before. It's not my business. <laughs> A mess. We are here to abide in the articulation of what the critificus would be in a manifestation of calligraphy. Well, that boy still can't speak. We we here now for church (laughs) complaints only. Yeah. Oh, he is bilingual. Come, 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 what? No, no. Complaints only. Complaints only. That's... I tell you. Oh, oh I didn't know it. Boy, my boy, that boy sure is smart. Good Dang. God. That's why he's pastor. <laughs> you okay? I learned that from the Pope. From the Pope? I didn't know y'all talk. I didn't know y'all was We saying. don't talk. I swung by the, Vi- the Vicatican when I was <laughs> over there <laughs> in uh, Rome. That's why they don't talk. <laughs> the Vi- the Vi- what, pastor? The Vicatican. <laughs> I went swung through there. Okay. <laughs> he was out on the balcony. Uh-huh. And I hollered up from down below and we had a conversation. Did now, did you ride in his cart? Because he got a nice little... Uh, no, I, it wasn't bill. big enough for me. I, you got to get something way more pimping than this here. Where you'll see that? Why are we standing? <laughs> Go ahead, Deacon. All right, Pastor, let's get down to business here. We got some issues going on in this church. Now, uh, Sister uh, Perlene Walker lost her flip phone at a funeral, and she thinks it's in the cemetery. Now, she's asking, can we send two of the deacons to see if they can find it? But I'm telling you right now, I know I'm not going, but the rest of the deacons say they're not going either. So uh, it's your call on her helping her find her flip phone. Let her know that flip, flow, flip phones is Oscillate and that I, we won't be I, sending no I, one I, out. They what? They they oscillate, D. What he said. He said what he said. All, uh-huh. right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I let her know. Let me keep it moving. Uh Don King and Cornell West, they barber has passed, and they are asking if we can 
chip oh, in to find them the right barber that knows how to cut how they like it. So. We don't need to find another barber for those brothers. We are stupid. We just gonna let it go. They only use them around Easter anyhow. Uh, uh, so okay. uh, <laughs> we gonna we gonna leave that alone. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right That's there. How you want it? All right. We'll leave we'll it alone. Let that go. All right. Well, that, I guess it'll just grow out more naturally then. But all right. Uh, but we'll leave the, it alone. Uh, we'll let the weekends bob <laughs> take a shot at it. And the weekend. All right. Uh, the side piece ministry is asking for money to send their spouses away so they can have a weekend without all the drama. Uh, your call, Pastor. But they just trying to, they, they wives and husbands is in the way as far as the people that's in the side piece ministry. Right. Uh -huh. well, the side piece ministry that I'm very familiar with, I've been trying to rescue these souls for a number of years now. What we've decided to do with the side piece ministry mm -hmm. is uh, allow their relationships to run their course. Okay. How All many right. how many people is in the side piece ministry? Right you? now, if my last time I tabulated, it looked like it's about 32, 33 people in the side piece ministry. Well, look at here. I will be counseling 32 uh, broken homes and marriages soon. Man. And then they won't be side pieces no more. They'll just be pieces. Oh, no. Man. Well, that's... I mean, what's mm -hmm. what's the difference between a piece and a side? I don't, I don't. Get it. I mean, mm -mm. Mm -mm. a piece is chicken, a side is slaw. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Preaching, uh, pastor. That's uh, here I go. Uh, booty blessings. Um, what oh. <laughs> <Are you> threatening. <laughs> Come I can't on, do deacon. that. <laughs> All right. Uh, booty blessings. Our sisters who used to be strippers are asking, can you go with them to different strip clubs and bless some of these girls that's still working in the club? They call it booty bless. They want you to go in and lay hands on them, Pastor. I absolutely <laughs> will be going into all these clubs <laughs> to redeem lost souls. You got to yes. serve, Pastor. You, you're a servant. Why would I not? You're a servant, yes. I was called. <laughs> And when you call, you got the uh -huh. answer. Come on here, boy. Come on here. And calling oftentimes mm -hmm. means that the answer must be yes. Yes. Amen. yes. Huh. Ooh, Glory. Amen. Again. Mm -hmm. and again. Will you be yeah. taking church ones? Will you be taking You're church be ones? Hands with you? On them? Mm hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever necessary to get them <laughs> down off your poles. <laughs> uh, all right, last but not least, Pastor, uh, this is a last and an urgent request. Chris Paul is asking that you come to game six and pray for them in the locker room. <laughs> Are you available uh, Tuesday, which is tomorrow night? Are you available to go down there? Because Chris Paul say they, they definitely need prayer right now. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to be able to make that uh well, pray for him right now, Pastor. Well, I don't. Okay. Father, <laughs> if you yeah. will, uh -huh. knowing on, that uh, Brother Paul has been in uh -huh. the league 16 years, That's ain't right. ever tasted the holding up of a trophy, That's allow right. him to hold his trophy up like he be holding up them State Farm commercials, <laughs> minus the white girl. Bless him, Lord. Lift him up so he can be famous for something other than a State Farm commercial. We ask all these things in his name, church. Say amen. 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 Entertainment and national news at the top of the hour right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, guys, we have to say congratulations to LeBron James and Don Cheadle. Space Jam, their new movie, uh, Space Jam, A New Legacy, is the number one movie in America right now. It brought in $31.65 wow. million. Wow. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes. When's no, the last up, time man. you heard that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Since before the pandemic. Yeah. And that's low. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's low, yeah. y'all. Yeah. yeah. 31 for a movie that costs that. Yeah. But well, because, because of the of pandemic, COVID, you're right. yeah, you know, mm-hmm. man, we just not back. Thirty-one million is low, man. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. a low number, y'all. That's a two hundred yeah, that, million dollar movie, you right? But it's big for right now, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. for this time, yeah. we went, we went to the time. movies and saw it. It was so good. Oh. It was so good. Mm-hmm. I saw a lot of little. Boys. I don't know how they gonna make their money back on that one, though. Well, is that just the box office number? Because I know people can watch it at home. It'll be on. It'll be on for years. That, that's how they're making the money, oh, Steve. Okay. It'll be a, oh. for a long time, right? Yeah. Yeah. How much it costs? How much the movie costs? Probably two hundred million dollars. One hundred and fifty million, I think. Yeah. To Good. make it. Yeah. yeah. You can't do thirty on your first week and think you finna get that back. Well, it's the number one movie in the country, though. So we gotta say congratulations. The, the, about the whole deal that. is so LeBron that got his money. Coming back. He got his money in his pocket. LeBron got his money. Surely it wasn't up against nothing. <laughs> well, the Black <laughs> Widow, it was up against the Black Widow, the Marvel movie. That was oh, Scarlett Johansson. I don't, I don't want to say kids. nothing. <laughs> if you ain't talking Black Panther. <laughs> right. <laughs> they did better off getting a black lady, to, a black girl to play Black Widow, uh-huh. you know, and draw some more interest like they did with Black Panther. But you know they just do enough. To, it's okay. I don't. I don't. I don't know why I'm yeah, talking about this because I no really don't care. care. Yeah. I, I'm so sorry. I'm just trying to be engaging. I apologize to my <laughs> listening audience because I don't give a damn about no black I, widow. <laughs> well, I think Space Jam needs a shout out because I saw a lot of black boys there, Steve. And when the movie was uh, over, they were there with their dads and they were like, oh, "Let's cool. go see it again." I love LeBron, Dad. Oh, okay, cool, and we cool, love cool. LeBron and we love so Don cool. Cheadle. That's the point. That's it, yeah. yeah, all I just said was I don't care nothing about no black widow. Okay, moving on. <laughs> you didn't have to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want right. Steel Water to come out. I want to see Steel Water. Okay, all right. But okay. that's in the movies, and I went, man, I ain't going to be going out there. Is that with Matt Damon? All right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. In other entertainment news, some sad news to report. Um, in case you haven't heard, hip-hop legend Biz Marquis passed away Friday night at the age of 57 with his wife Tara Hall by his side. Um, this was after a long fight with complications from diabetes. Uh, he was born in Harlem, of course, raised in Long Island. And he got his start as a DJ before he came on the scene in the mid-'80s by bringing humor to the rap game. His presence added some much-needed comic relief to the genre at the time that prioritized gritty raps about street life, uh, including his biggest hit, Just a Friend. Uh, Biz Marquis, yeah, was known as a human beatbox. And in addition to his career as an artist, he had a notable stint on children's shows and TV sitcoms. Biz suffered from health problems in his final years. In April of last year, he was hospitalized due to complications from type 2 diabetes. We say, rest in peace, Biz Marquis. All right. Good guy. I work with him a bunch. He's yeah. a really, really nice guy, man. Really I only yeah. worked with him a few times. Great brother, though. But you know what, Great Steve? Brother. He did not want to play that damn song. He didn't want to sing it. Just he a friend. Play. Really? He he want to hear it. He want to hear it no more. He played it enough. He wouldn't play it. <laughs> they like they're just a friend. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna get onto it. Yeah, I'm gonna play it. And, and <laughs> play it. <laughs> yeah, so many tributes to him. Yeah. Um, over the weekend on social media, you know, everybody yes. talked about what a big teddy bear love of a guy nice that guy, he was. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. that's all you can hear. Type guy, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw LL Cool J talk about him. He was tearing up about his yeah. friend. And oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really, really. Kid just... Capri was talking about him, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, he was at, at Magic Johnson's 25th wedding anniversary party mm-hmm. that he threw. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, Biz Marquis was the DJ, mm-hmm. and he DJed for Dougie Fresh, and then LL came up impromptu. And did the coldest thing impromptu I've ever seen. Just fire. I've ever seen. Just really? fire with it, right? Wow. On a dock in San mm-hmm. Tropez. Yes. The coldest it. thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I bet it was. I bet it I was. said, wow, this dude is talented, man. Mm-hmm. He's a good yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. Very good guy. And Biz yeah. was the DJ. That's the last yeah. time I saw Biz. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and Biz did DJing when you had the crates with the, with the albums, the whole lot, yes. you know, way mm-hmm. before. Four, yeah, five, six trips from the truck. You know what I mean? Yeah. The vinyl. In, in and out. The vinyl. Yes. 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 He opened for Chris Rock during Chris Rock's tour. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. he did so, so much uh, yeah. different stuff. You know, mm-hmm. and just was so in demand as that DJ. All the stars wanted him for their parties and stuff. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah boy. Nobody yeah. beats the biz. Mm-hmm. Man. Mm-hmm. And like you said, Shirley, he brought the humor. You know, to to hip hop. And even though Jay, we love just a friend. It just that that's a feel good <laughs> song. That's a really good song. You know yeah. you. You can be off singing it and all loud, and it mm-hmm. just makes yeah. you laugh. Just, mm-hmm. just a so, good song, feel yeah. good song. Yeah. yeah, even Bootsy Collins, another legend. Bootsy Collins tweeted about Biz Marquis losing Biz Marquis as you know being a legend and everything. So you got old school, you know, talking yes. about the new school. It's just you know he was, he touched everyone. Biz yeah. Marquis did. He touched everyone. He did. Yep. Again, rest in peace, Biz Marquis. All right. Um, we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, introduce your friend. We got to look into his mind. Ladies and gentlemen, dark as it is, it is the <laughs> demented mind of J. Anthony Brown. Today is really dark. Today is, is it? probably my I'm not surprised. Day. No. First of all, I'd like to thank Jess, Amy, and all the people who came out to the art show we did in Columbia, South Carolina. Had a great time. Thank you very much. Now, with that being said, I am the darkest one on the show by complexion and just attitude. I really am. Why? But it's because of the things I like, the things that bring me joy. That, Like if I see a balloon held by a baby and it float up in the air. Uh-huh. The joy I get from that is just un- unbelievable. <laughs> just, and just the baby this, is upset? You, you can't, you you can't get the balloon. The balloon is unretrievable and it just flies up and just so happy, so happy with that. <laughs> you are dark. Oh my God, if so I'm driving on the highway and somebody passes me real fast uh-huh. and then I get up a little further and I see that their ass is pulled over, <laughs> the joy. <laughs> That I, the joy that fills my body from that. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm with you on that one, though. Oh, oh just God. little things, just little things, just little things. You know, little like things. if the door closes in somebody's face when I'm on the elevator. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I'm done. I'm so you done. Go to but the buttons you, to try you to gotta, open the You door. gotta act like you pushing buttons, and yeah. you gotta say it. I'm trying to, I'm trying, you got to do all that. You know, yeah. but uh, you got to uh, say that. But you're really not okay. trying. You're not <laughs> trying at all. <laughs> oh, the joy I get from you're falling, sick. seeing you're somebody sick. fall. There's no age limit. <laughs> Anybody. <laughs> I don't give a damn. <laughs> oh, my God. When you fall, now, I will help you up. <laughs> I will help you up. But when you fall... Oh my God! I'm just Steve, get him. It, it just uh-huh. fills my spirit. It fills my spirit. Yeah. <laughs> that fills your spirit. Oh. That you know what spirit. I like? You know, like if we're in the rainy season now, uh-huh. this is uh-huh. so much fun. You see a lot of this. You got to drive around what? and see the bus splash water on people. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you drive around just, looking at Just see that man. little look on their face, like yeah, yeah, they got you. They got you. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and last but not least, you're in the airport. You at uh-huh. your gate waiting right. for your flight, mm-hmm. and to see somebody run to the next gate who has missed their flight. You have. To, oh my god! Oh my god! You guys, first of all, you gotta you gotta laugh inside, but you have to say to that person, you have to to get the full joy out of this. You gotta say, "Did you miss your flight?" You gotta say that. You, <laughs> <laughs> Coming yeah. up at, at 34 minutes after the hour, tell us about that time you dot, 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 right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, comedians on this show. We here. This segment is called Tell Us About That Time You dot, dot, dot. 
All right, tell us about that time you cursed really loud in public, but didn't really mean it that time. Oh, I can tell you that one. All right, yeah. come on. Yeah. So um, we we lived across the street from uh, Benedict College where they played football. If you would line the field with, with lime or whatever, they let you in the game free. So you go over there, line the field, and then hop the fence to come back up. Coming back over, mm -hmm. my mom was on the other side, but I didn't see her. And I yelled out, man, get your MF foot out my MFA. And my mom was still... <laughs> Because he was helping me. Up. And I was just cussing. I was in free form cussing, man. <laughs> and my mom was on the other side. I just slid back over on the wall. Just stayed over there. She went home, man. She knows your voice. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Come on, nephew. Tell us about Let that Let me see. Time. I got one. I got uh -huh. one. I oh, it has to be about cussing? No, no we have a lot anything. of them. It could be anything. Oh. You mm -hmm. had to go to court. All right, come on, nephew. I know you got one. Tell us about the time you dot, 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 cussed, whatever you did. I what got did a do? cuss, dot, dot, dot. I, my, my pops, my, my dad sent me to uh, to drop something off at the church. And I'm walking around the church and looking for the, looking for the pastor, looking for the pastor. I don't see the pastor. And I done got frustrated and said, where in the blank is pastor? And right when I said that, I lied to you not. He showed up, but you know what? He came back at me and said, I'm the blank right here. You ain't gonna be talking, you ain't gonna be talking like that at my church. <laughs> so I feel, that's when me and Pastor bonded very well. <laughs> Whoa. All See, right, I was I was looking at it from this right here. You ever have somebody just come up to you and ask you to tell a story, but the story was just meant for just them? But now nah, they in a group and they want and they come up to you and they go like, "Hey man, Steve, what's up? Hey man, <laughs> that was funny as hell, man. Tell t tell them about that time you got caught cheating." Oh, oh. <laughs> I looked at her. I said, "Dog, turn, my head just turned sideways." I'm looking at this dude like, "Hey, tell this that, that story. That story was just for us." Yeah. To hear you in front of all these people, I don't even know these damn people. You talking about some tough damn boy? What it is? Talking about the time you got you got caught cheating? No, you went off. He need his ass. He need his ass. I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Tell us about that time you were playing. Tell us about that time you dot, dot, dot. What about if you had to go to court? Anybody have to go to court or anything? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. I had to Surely. Go to court. I had to go to court. Do <laughs> you know he the king of these? These are what two court what? masters right here. Shirley, what? You want divorce? You want crime? <laughs> what you want? Court. Uh, I went to court. You Can I talk about this one time I went to court and... Uh, I had to give, if anybody doesn't know this, if you get married in the state of California, once you get a divorce, the money that you made, you have to split that. And when I heard that, it didn't register in my mind. It's because I said, okay, I got that. And I didn't figure out the number till I, my ass got outside. I'm like, I'll be damned. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But you weren't bitter, were you? Yeah, that was the start of it. <laughs> I tell you, come on, Steve. I tell you about the time I went to court one time. Uh, uh. I just won the settlement for this car accident, six hundred seventy-five dollars. That's a lot of money to me. But my car got smashed, and I owed like three hundred, four hundred to get the car fixed. And then because of the accident, I had to go to courts. So when I got the settlement check, I got six hundred something, and then. I got a speeding ticket in a school zone, and when I got to court, they charged me the exact amount of money that I had left. <laughs> Boy, I was sitting there. I went from six seventy five to nothing. God, dog. All right, thanks, guys. Coming up next, the nephew with today's prank phone call right after this. Lord. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today and the subject, oh, you guys are going to love this. 
This drinking and cussing has got to stop. This drinking and cussing Uh-oh. has to stop. Okay. Uh-oh. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, we'll get to that a little bit later. But right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Nev? Three-minute remarks. Mm. Three-minute remarks. I think all of us as black people know what that means. Mm -hmm. Three-minute remarks. It happens at the funeral, and people want to go a lot longer than uh, than what's expected. So uh, let's uh, take a listen. Three-minute remarks. Hello? Uh, yes, I'm trying to reach a brother Keith, please. Yeah, this is Keith. Uh, Keith, how you doing? This is Lawrence over at Hill Funeral Home. Okay. We are the ones that have the, uh, uh doing the funeral for Sister Dolores. And that is, uh, your yeah. aunt. Am I, am I understanding right? Yeah, that's my auntie. Okay. And as you know, the funeral is, uh, this coming Thursday. Yes, I'll be there Thursday. Uh, I'm giving you a call uh, because uh, it's been brought to my attention uh, that you were going to be giving remarks for the funeral. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay, I wanted to call you because we're getting ready to print the programs for the funeral and let okay. you know that they have taken you off for the remarks, uh, because they say that you're not going to be. Oh, oh hold on, hold on, hold on. What do you, you mean taking me off? Well, what I'm saying is they say that you're, they, they, you're not going to abide by the two, three minute rule that they have for remarks, and they wanted they they've taken you off. And uh, uh, who 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 is they? Who who? Hold on, come out, come out. Who who? who what's the name again? Uh, Lawrence. I'm Lawrence. I'm the actual funeral director. Lord, and who who told you to take me off? Uh, gave, one of the gave, one of the family members, I'm assuming, is who who uh, made the adjustment. And that, an adjustment? That ain't no adjustment. That's that's changing the whole program. Who else is on the list? Uh, I mean, there's quite a few family members doing different things uh, uh, throughout the funeral. Okay. Uh, so how did you get to my name is what I'm trying to figure out. That they said I, that you, I, I, well, I, I, listen I, to I, me, listen, listen I, to me, I, listen I, to me, brother Keith, listen to me. What they said is that you weren't going to abide by the time. You weren't going to do your remarks in three minutes or less. Listen, now, listen, listen, listen. My auntie raised me. She put me through college. And you think I'm going to, I'm going to go up there on her funeral and, be under two minutes? Well, it, 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 well listen, for, listen for Brother Keith. Brother Keith, listen to me. Normally when we have these funerals, uh, people who give remarks, we have them three minutes or less. Okay, okay. so I'll I tell, you, I tell you what, Mr. Lawrence. Who else on the list? Is Sheila on the list? Uh, Is Sheila on the list? We have a Sheila. Yes, there's a Sheila that's singing. Take uh, her name off the list. Take her off the list and put me where she's supposed to be with my turn and her time. Is is, is Bobby Jr. on there too? I uh, better not be on there. Bobby, now yes, Bobby Jr. is giving remarks. Hell, that's a, what? That's that's Dolores. Oh. That's Miss Dolores' son, right? Yes, her son, the one that been locked up. He just got out of jail. Truth be told, he the one down there put her in the coffin. You need to take him off the list too. Give me all that time because I be. If, if I ain't gonna take nothing, that my auntie's brother gonna brother Keith, let me let me let me just say this to you. I cannot take Sheila or Bobby Junior off. I can't make any alterations to this program unless they say that what I you can. Mean? That, sir, what you mean? Can, you already you already take you already taking people name off. You taking my name off? Like, but the, but they, they 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 orchestrated this though. Who the, who the f- is they? Who is they? They can have a mother. Problem, they try to take me off my auntie program. Who was they, sir? I, I'm not gonna get into a family matter, but until they say that you, you can be on, in a family matter, sir, I'm not gonna. I don't want to. I don't want to have the, the, this, this turn out to be bad. And we want to have a great home going for Sister Dolores. Okay, You're damn right. And, and if I don't get to say nothing, I guarantee you. I guarantee you, it's gonna be a two for one in there. Somebody else gonna get their in the coffin too. I guarantee you that. 
if I don't get to say nothing at my auntie's funeral, my auntie didn't pay for my damn college. I didn't put six thousand dollars in in the funeral. I bet you. I tell you this. I tell you this, Mr. Lawrence. I bet you whether I'm on the program or not, I bet you I say what the f I want to. I bet you that much. You tell Bay that. I didn't, my auntie didn't put me through college. I didn't put money on the funeral. I call around to see who ain't putting no money on the funeral. Tell them they can't be on the program. Man. Uh, Keith, they, they, when they decide who, who, who's on it, if they change the the format, then I will call you Bay. Who who the f is they? That's what I'm trying to get get you on the Who is they? Can I can I tell you something? And and I don't want you to get too irate. Okay. okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. I, I just want to say this, Keith Wilson. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just man. got pranked. You just got pranked by your cousin Bobby Junior. You bull. <laughs> I'm Bobby Junior. Up. I'm that. I'm kicking Bobby. I know that. that, that, that I know my blood pressure is all up. I ain't got time to be playing, man. Taking me off the damn program. I'm kicking Bobby ass. I know that. Oh, you Bobby man, Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> Bobby said y'all grew up like brothers, man, and, and you was that, you was basically another son of Mr. Lord. That's right. Yes, yes, I was, man. Oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, let me ask you this, man. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay. Come on, give it to me. <laughs> When he, as soon as he was to find out who they who were. Who is they? They. they all of they didn't have a problem. No. Bobby me, Jr. Steve, and Sheila. Take them for me, the, the people the he was taking is off they. the list. Yeah. Bobby let, me, let me hear who's on there because I'm taking them off. Who's on there? What the hell they doing on there? She take sang. them off. Oh, take no, them take off, damn it. <laughs> She's singing. Take off. I got her time. <laughs> I know, good stuff, I know good nephew. and hell well, little Bobby ain't on there. Yeah, <laughs> take oh, him man. off. Yeah. <laughs> what you got, nephew? That was good. Oh, man, <laughs> let me put this out there because y'all got to tune in. You got to tune in, I promise you. Power Book 3, Raising oh, Cane. Yeah. You do not want to miss it. Mm-hmm. That's from the executive producer, Curtis Pitt, Descent Jackson, and Ooh. Courtney A. Kemp. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, this is going to be a hit. Now, this is what I like about it. 1991, Southside, Jamaica, Queens, like never yeah. before, before. The story revolves around the coming of age of Kane and Stark as he enters into the world of crime. Now, this is a prequel to the original Power series, but guess what? It stands on its own. It's not like you had to see Power in order to okay. see this. You can jump uh-huh. right in and have this story uh-huh. by itself. So, all right, it premiered uh, last night, July 18th, on Stars and the Stars app. You got to watch, watch it on Sunday nights on stars that is power book three raising canaan yes Ooh, 50 man. cent Good. does it 50 cent does it again uh-huh yeah, yeah. he's talented man yeah, yeah he is. He is. you need to watch this you need to watch this one called 13 steve you'll like that the number 13 and 50's yeah. in it but he's also a producer in it All right, 50 yeah, got some you. movies y'all is that <laughs> yes, where he, he a does. computer guy no, no, no. This is like Russian roulette. It's crazy. What? Russian yeah, roulette. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, nephew. Coming up next, Strawberry Letters subject, this drinking and cussing has to stop. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter. (laughs) Just like we're going to read this one right here. Right now. It could be yours. You never know. Mm, You never know. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. 
Subject, this drinking and cussing has to stop. Dear Stephen Shirley, my husband of 22 years has made a lot of changes in the last six months. He's been in the military since I met him, and he retired last year, but he still hangs out with his co-workers. He is always cursed like a sailor because he was a sailor when he was younger. When we had our first child, I asked him to watch what he said around our daughter after he slacked up with using profanity. And he did slack up with using profanity. Now that he's retired, I think he's frustrated and bored because he started using strong four-letter words and he said the kids are old enough to understand. We have a 17-year-old and a 15-year-old uh, and he curses at them like they are his age. Not only do I have to put up with his bad language, he put a bar in the basement and, and bought all brands of alcohol and his former co-workers pop up at our house and they go downstairs and drink up all of my husband's liquor. He gets very drunk and usually he falls asleep in the basement and I have to usher his friends out. Money is not an issue with all of the alcohol, but I get tired of his buddies drinking up his premium liquor and they don't give him one cent to buy more. I asked my husband if he's going through something or if this is a midlife crisis and he told me that he's fine but ready to let his hair down a little because he's not working anymore. I did not want to spend my retirement with a drunk, foul-mouthed man. He's the wor- Here's the worst part. The last time we were being intimate, he was drunk and he called me a dirty name and he kept cursing so loudly I was afraid our kids would hear it. How can I stop him from being so crude? I need the drinking and cussing to stop. Wow. Well, it doesn't look like it's going to stop for a while anyway. Um, It it sounds like your husband needs a seriously different kind of hobby than, you know, just being downstairs drinking with his friends. But he did tell you he wanted to let his hair down a little bit. Uh, Maybe this is not going to last forever, but um, I see you want to cut it off now. Cut it off at the past before it gets any worse. He did say, uh, like I said, he wanted to let his hair down a little because he's not working anymore. And that's, you know... You said it too. He's bored and frustrated. But he also has to realize that this is your house too. When you guys do have kids, he needs to be mindful and respectful of his influence on them. Um, He was able to curb his cursing when your daughter was little, so you know he can change if he wants to. Uh, I say you tell him you need a break from all the company and the drinking and the cursing because it's getting out of control and he's drinking way too much, maybe turning into an alcoholic. Um, You know, let him know he's setting a horrible example for the kids. He needs to find find something else to do. Tell him you don't want drunk sex. (laughs) You don't want that. And you don't want his old co-workers just popping up at the house unannounced. Now, are you mad at that or are you mad at the fact that they're drinking up all your, your husband's good liquor? Because those are kind of two different issues. If they come, you don't have to answer the door, especially if they come unannounced. Stop letting them in. If they do, just don't answer the door. And if you do let them in, hide the liquor. Hide the liquor. All right? That's what you have to do. Steve? Well, this drinking and cussing has to stop. (laughs) I'm going to just be up front with you before we start this letter. I might can help you with the drinking. (laughs) What are you saying? I don't want to be hypocritical. <laughs> <laughs> you can only do it I think I can possibly help you with this cussing. Cuss. I know where it comes from. Anyway, your husband, a 22, that made a lot of changes in the last six months. Been in the military since you met him. He retired last week. But he still hangs around with his coworkers. Well, he misses friends. Uh, they've they had relationships. You know, a lot of people once they stop working, you know, they miss the camaraderie at work. They miss the relationships down at the job. They just his dudes, and he miss them. All right. So he's always cussed like a sailor, and he said that's cause he was. But Marines cuss, Army people cuss, post office workers cuss, pastors cuss, comedians, comedians cuss, yeah. radio show hosts cuss. Shirley cuss. She act like she don't, but she probably do. All that old mess right there. Who the hell don't cuss? Anyway, <laughs> anyway, let's just move on. I can tell you for sure, Carla, for real cuss. So now, we had our first child. I asked him to watch what he said around her daughter, and he slacked up. Well, now he's retired, and he's frustrated and bored because he, he done started using four-letter words again. What? Hmm. 
He slacked up when the baby was young, but see, now you say we have a 17-year-old and a 15-year-old, and he cusses at them like they his age. They probably heard these words before, man. Now, if now if he's not cursing at his daughter, that's a different thing. You know, cussing at your little girls is wrong if you a man. I just think it's wrong. I do. Not only do I have to put up with his bag language, he put a bar in the basement, he bought all brands of alcohol, his former co-workers pop up at the house, and they go downstairs and they drink up all of my husband's liquor. He gets very drunk and usually falls asleep in the basement, and I have to usher his friends out. Now, that's that's a little crazy. Your husband drinking that hard? Yeah. That he fall asleep and they still down there? That's a problem. I have a solution for that, though, when we come back. I asked my husband if he's going through something in midlife crisis. He said he's fine. He just ready to let his hair down a little bit because he ain't working no more. Well, I got that, but we got to do something because y'all can't be that old because the kids ain't but 17 and 15. So now he retired. We got to come up with something else to do besides drinking. Mm-hmm. I got right. the rest when I come back. All right. Thank you, Steve. Hang on. We'll have part two of Steve's response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's Strawberry Letter subject, the drinking and the cussing has to stop. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. Come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. The subject, <laughs> this drinking and cussing has to stop. Well, here's the deal. Been married 22 years. He's always cussed. He done started uh he done put a bar in the basement. He misses friends, those relationships. Uh, he done started back to cussing again. And uh, now the kids are 17 and 15. And you say he cussing at them like they his age. They probably heard all these words before. Like I said before, as long as he's not cursing at the daughter that way, I don't think that's cool at all. Because it sends a bad example to a young lady that it's okay for a man to talk to her that way. And it's not. And as fathers, we have to be very, very conscious the example that we put in front of our daughters and our sons. But you really don't want a daughter to think that this is acceptable coming from a person who's supposed to love her. Yeah. That's Steve. unacceptable, mm-hmm. dog. Mm-hmm. And that you got to get a grip on that right there. Now, he respected her when she was young. Mm-hmm. But now that they older, you, I got that they old enough that they've heard this. But you can't do that to your daughter, man. I'm telling you, it's a dangerous slope. You're creating something in her that she don't need to be. She needs to always look at her father as a protector, somebody she can go to and want to you know, hold her father in high esteem. He could be losing that. So point that out to him. Tell him I said that. That's cool. <clears throat> Steve said you shouldn't do it around your daughter. And you shouldn't. And most men agree with me. And, all, and we have daughters on this show. Me and Tommy got daughters. And that, and that, that ain't how we talk. All right, now he done put this bar downstairs and his workers pop up at the house and they go downstairs, they drink up all your husband's liquor. He get drunk, fall asleep, and then you got to usher his friends out. Money ain't an issue with all the alcohol, but I get tired of his buddy drinking up his premium liquor and then they don't give him one cent to buy more. So, now, here's the deal with that. I think the solution is he get a night with his buddies downstairs. Pick the night. That is the night for drinking. Mm -hmm. And then that makes it once a week or once every two weeks, whatever y'all decide. But he gets a night to go down with his bar with his buddies. They can't just pop up. I I don't know what what y'all running over there. This ain't camp. And y'all ain't little kids coming over talking about, hey, we want to play video games and ride your bike. That ain't what this is. You got a family, dog. And you can't have people just popping up at your house. That's unacceptable because now you're not only disrespecting your daughter, you're disrespecting your wife. So now you ask him if he's going through something. He said he's ready to retire now and he won't let his hair down a little. I've been told that you can retire from the military as early as 38. But you've been with him 22 years, so he must have been in the military for 20, 22 years. So let's say y'all got married at 20. Let's say 2022 because the kids is 15 and 17. So let's say he's 40, 44 years old. Okay, dog. So you ain't finna do nothing except drink? Because you done retired? You got to do something else, dog. You may live another 40, 50 years. Well, what? This can't be it. 
You need to get some hobbies. I didn't want to spend my retirement with a drunk, foul-mouthed man. Here's the worst part. Last time we were being intimate, he was drunk, and he called me a dirty name. And he kept cussing so loudly, I was afraid our kids was here. Well, they heard it. They heard it. He loud. You know, drunk people don't ever realize how loud they talk. I don't, I don't know what happened, but I think drinking blocks your hearing. Mm. That is for damn sure a symptom of being drunk. I think it blocks your hearing. So I know he talking loud and they heard it. How can I stop him from being so crude? I need the drinking and cussing to stop. First of all, Shirley said it right. You don't have to have drunk sex. So you drinking, we not having sex. That'll cut back on some of the drinking. And if you cuss me, it's over. But now, once again, I can help you with the drinking. I know, you know, sex and cussing is kind of, you know. They go together. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Kind of hand in hand. Huh? Oh. Are you really? okay? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how we going. You know, I got. We're gonna you. stop cussing at the kids, but I'm trying to figure out how we're gonna stop this. While we have sex, um, you know what? What? What are we supposed to say? I mean, there, I, I don't know substitute words like "ooh, goody, goody." You know, you can't. <laughs> you just can't. I don't know what you're supposed to say while you having it. That replaces all oh, sugar, honey, iced tea. Oh, I don't know how you replace you know, that with uh, uh, sometimes jeepers. Jeepers. Mm-hmm. jeepers. jeepers. Than that. How about him and just, whoa, this is swell. You know, it's say and it, oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what we're doing right here. You know, I don't, I don't know how to do that. So once again, I can't help you right there. Mm-hmm. He needs to stop uh, the drinking, knowing you need to have the guys have a night that they can come over and you know they coming and they leave. Uh, you know, you all could also implement, well, he just put that bar down there. They come, just, just have a night that you can do it. Mm-hmm. And then just set one bottle, two bottles out. This is what we're drinking. And then that's it. They can be right. premium liquor, but once that's gone, it's over with. It's over with. Man. <laughs> you know, right. we ain't drinking five, six bottles. <laughs> All right, Steve, thank you. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. Check out Strawberry Letter Podcast on Demand. Coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, we'll have some sports talk with Steve right after this. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, Junior's out. He's celebrating his birthday. You know, his birthday was yesterday, and uh, he's out on vacation. So what so, better person to fill yeah, in look, for So for I'll take over. A little yeah, different way to do sports. First of all, happy birthday to my youngest son, Winton Bryceland Ali Harvey. Yeah. Congratulations, my son is 24. He's, he's doing a three-day a weekend birthday bash. I ain't seen his ass. Okay. <laughs> I was going to roll out to say happy birthday, but uh, I was forewarned. You probably don't want to do that. Uh, oh, I did, but I'd rather play golf. So happy birthday to work. All right, let's get down to sports. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Jovic, who won the Wilmington men's title uh, and has now tied the record with Feder and the, and the dog. Saw that over the weekend. Wow. Great. Okay. Like to say, the boxing match of the night on Showtime, Cholo whooped his boy ass like I knew he would. Congratulations <laughs> <Okay>. to that. <laughs> also, oh, congratulations sorry. to Mark Cavendish of the Tour de France. See, these are all the sports I watch. Yeah. Oh, Mark okay. Cavendish <laughs> tied the record for most stage wins in the Tour de France, and he didn't break it because he came in second in the sprint down the champs Lay in the last day, which was Sunday, of the Tour de France. But I'd like to say congratulations to my friends over in the UAE because they team won the title this year. The yellow jersey will now reside in the UAE for a year, the Tour de France. All right. Now, okay. let's just get out. The only thing we really know about the Milwaukee Bucks is up three games to two against uh-huh. the damn Phoenix Suns. Mm-hmm. I don't know what we're going to do. 
They went out to the Valley and won the game. I was stunned. They overcame a big lead that uh, Phoenix had. So yeah. Phoenix is really. I don't know. I really am pulling for Chris Paul because I love the guy. I love his game. But, boy, the Greek freak ain't nothing to play with. Nothing. He bought the business, and they ain't got no answer for him. So I don't know. And to be honest with you, we ain't on in the radio in Milwaukee or Phoenix. So I really have spent way too much time talking about this damn game. I really have, man. We was on in one of them cities we was on, then you know I go and do sports for you. But also I'd like to send a shout out to this little boy that I mentor, affectionately call his name Hippo. We got a bet that the Dallas Cowboys, he think they gonna have a better season than the Cleveland Browns. I told him to quit crying. We understand. We understand. And then okay. I told him, well, okay. you can bet a thousand, but I don't think you, you young ass ain't got a thousand. <laughs> Thank That's you, sports. Steve. Thank you, Steve, for sports. Okay. Steve uh, we'll, sports. <laughs> we'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show at the top of the hour right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, we all have heard the saying, we know this saying, Detroit versus everybody. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Well, did you guys see the video? Um, this went viral of a Detroit woman. Her name was Bianca Chambers. She tracked down her stolen Mercedes via social media. Uh, and, and okay, let's go back a bit. What had happened was Bianca <laughs> was tired of waiting on the police. So she tracked down her stolen bins in a parking lot of a barber shop. She went inside the barber shop and dragged her suspect out by his locks the dreadlocks no. on his head while what? other people helped her make a citizen's arrest take a listen oh my god y'all i see my car the thief so bold he even made a pit stop at the strip mall where bianca owns a boutique they was driving you know they was having a good time you know they was smoking but yes my car was very clean he even got the car detailed. Sources tell Fox 2 the thief, now in police custody, has a history of stealing cars since he was a teen. You're just the dumbest criminal, that's all. Like, you're joyriding in my car. Like, when nobody going to see you. Hmm. All right, and the, wait, there's more. Wait, there's more. <laughs> Come on, take a listen to this. Excuse me, you got that dance out there? Yes, you do. You have been driving around in my for three days. He gonna say, I bought it for twenty five hundred. I said, how the gonna buy a hot car from another mother for twenty five hundred? That been driving in my. Sh okay. What? You just can't mess That's with everybody. That's how you do it, girl. That's, the lesson. That's how you do it. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. Detroit. <laughs> Hey, Detroit versus I just, everybody. I just had a family on Family Feud this week from uh -huh. Detroit. Uh -huh. Boy, I had the best time with these people out of Detroit. I told them, I say, my all the cities I've ever performed in, my all-time favorite city to go to on tour uh -huh. was Detroit. Yeah. I love some deep? damn Detroit. Man. Them was my folk up there. Yeah. Can't folk. Detroit, yes. Wow, so she, she him, put it she on got him. him good. She did. She, she did. She dragged him. Playing. Did y'all see that video, Jay? Uh -huh. I ain't see the video. I saw the video. She drugged uh -huh. his ass out that. the chair. He Send me the, the video. Chair. I ain't she even drug seen him it. Out the chair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, Jay. She drugged. She drugged his butt out the chair. Yeah. And she went right up to him. I loved her boldness. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah. no, you're not gonna take this from me. This is. This belongs to me. Yeah. The minute he said yes, he was driving the car, the ass whooping just came from Strike nowhere. Man. <laughs> you can't go back to that barber shop. No, yeah, you can't go back to that barber shop. You know, they're still talking about that. <laughs> yeah, he's a member that time. You know remember that time? The other day? He has become a member that time. No, hey, dog, hey, dog, hey, dog, let me tell you something. He has to get out of the crime business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, once you get your ass whooped and it go viral, <laughs> you can't steal socks. <laughs> no. You show out the car business. Uh -huh. But yeah. you got to get out of crime after this. You got to turn your life over to Christ. Yeah. 
This is this is this Amen. is the, you need to go get saved and use this as a teaching moment. <laughs> Testimony. <laughs> yeah, because only way you can get through this embarrassment is turn it over into a teaching moment for uh-huh. kids, yeah, for uh-huh. other people, right? She owned a boutique store. Yeah, in so that strip yeah, mall. so he stole the car from there, <laughs> had it washed, it was smoking. Detail. Yeah, <laughs> his car. <laughs> can we hear that one more time? Do we have? Do we have enough? This is the part where he, she approached him, yeah. Excuse me, you got that Benz out there? Yes, you do. What? You been driving around in my for three days. And he gonna say, I bought it for 2500 I said, how the gonna buy a hot car from another mother for 2500 That been driving in my shit. I love a good ass whooping. I really do. <laughs> we know. I really do. <laughs> Nothing like a good ass whooping, man. Nothing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. We'll have more of today's trending stories on the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up in 20 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> This story uh, out of Tokyo. Well, uh, Tokyo, the officials there have installed cardboard beds now in, wow. inside of the Olympic Village where the athletes will be staying. Why would you, why? You know, you, you might want to ask, why install cardboard beds? They need real beds to be comfortable. Well, mm-hmm. they install the cardboard beds to discourage the athletes from having sex. All right. They thought cardboard. You think I can't get it through this cardboard? You think I can't get it through this cardboard? You really think I can't? I knew you guys would like this. Take it away. Well, I mean, there's two things with this. What? First of all, Mm -hmm. why is cardboard stopping me? Exactly. (laughs) Clearly, you must not have known where this is capable of occurring at cardboard. Yeah. I've been on a pile of clothes in the floor in the basement. Oh. Cardboard. cardboard. You got to be crazy. I don't even know why we got to get on this bed. What are you discouraging? We're athletes. Everybody in here is an athlete. Right. Hello. All these shower poles in here, Mimi to show everybody how it goes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, because they say they get it in, those athletes. Those yeah, Olympic we can athletes get it in on that cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> we can slide around on this cardboard. It's a lot of getting we can do on it. You ain't never been in no box before? I know I ain't the only one that got it in the box. <laughs> I can right, get it in on go. the roll of toilet tissue. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> More of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Some sad news to report. Um, in case you haven't heard, hip hop legend Biz Marquis passed away Friday night at the age of 57 with his wife Tara Hall by his side. Um, this was after a long fight with complications from diabetes. Uh, he was born in Harlem, of course, raised in Long Island. And he got his start as a DJ before he came on the scene in the mid 80s by bringing humor to the rap game. His presence added some much needed comic relief to the genre at the time that prioritized gritty raps about street life, uh, including his biggest hit, Just a Friend. Uh, Biz Marquis, yeah, was known as a human beatbox. And in addition to his career as an artist, he had a notable stint on children's shows and TV sitcoms. Biz suffered from health problems in his final years. In April of last year, he was hospitalized due to complications from type 2 diabetes. We say, rest in peace, Biz Marquis. Very right. good guy. I work with him a bunch. He's yeah. a really, really nice guy, man. Really I only yeah. worked with him a few times. Great brother, though. But you know what, Great Steve? Brother. He did not want to play that damn song. He didn't want to sing it. Just he a friend? Play. Really? He, he didn't want to hear it. He didn't want to hear it no more. He played it enough. He wouldn't play it. <laughs> They're like, They're just a friend. He's like, yeah, I'm going to get on to it. Yeah, I'm going to play it. Yeah, yeah, gonna play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so many tributes to him yeah. um, over the weekend on social media. You know, everybody yes. talked about what a big teddy bear love of a guy nice that he guy, was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. that's mm-hmm. all Roach you can hear. Type guy, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I saw LL Cool J talk about him. He was tearing up about his yeah. friend. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really, really. really Kid just... Capri was talking about him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, he was at, at Magic Johnson's 25th wedding anniversary party mm-hmm. that he threw. 
Uh-huh. Uh, Biz Marquis was the DJ, mm-hmm. and he DJed for Dougie Fresh, and then LL came up impromptu and did the coldest thing impromptu I've ever seen. Just fire. I've ever wow. seen. Just really? fire with it, right? Wow. On a dock in San Tropez. Mm-hmm. Yes, the coldest it. thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I bet it was. I, bet I it said, was. "Wow, this dude is talented, man." Mm-hmm. He's good, yeah. man. yeah. And Biz yeah. was the DJ. That's the last yeah. time I saw Biz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And Biz did DJing when you had the crates with the with the albums, the whole yes. night, you know, way mm-hmm. before. Four, yeah, five, five the six computer. trips from the truck. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, the vinyl. In and out. The vinyl. The vinyl. Right. Yeah. 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 He opened for Chris Rock during Chris Rock's tour. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. he did so, so much oh, yeah. different stuff, you know, mm-hmm. and just was so in demand as that DJ. All the stars wanted him for their parties and stuff, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Coming up, our last break of the day. Thanks, everybody who came out to the art show in Columbia. Watch out that now. <laughs> okay, our last break of the day. And some closing remarks from the one and only, our fearless leader, Steve Harvey, at 49 Minutes After, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are, our last break of the day on this Monday. Wow, it went by pretty quickly, huh? On a Monday. Yes, a lot of people yes, don't like Mondays. Yeah. But um, oh, here we are. We work week. It's yeah. A mm-hmm. blessing. Mm-hmm. So, Tommy, you're back hey. on the comedy circuit doing your yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I did Virginia Beach. I did the Funny Bone this past weekend. So I want to thank all of those that came out, gave me six sold-out shows. I appreciate oh, wow. it. Nephew came through there and did the doggone thing. I sure did. <laughs> and I'm back. I'm thinking I, I'm not going to miss a month of performance. As long as I can. Keep that damn pandemic down. I promise you, I'm going to keep running. I'm with you on that. <laughs> I, good. I Congratulations. It, Money out there. It just feel good being on stage, too. Oh, yeah. Jeez, it yeah, feels good. Yeah, after a year and a half off. Uh-huh. What about too you, long. Jay? Yeah. I had an art show in Columbia, South Carolina. I sold, I didn't sell a whole lot of art, but I had my art on these jackets, and I sold completely out of all my jackets. So that was pretty good. I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah. I think that's my, my awesome. Very first art that show. is yeah. fantastic. Why are you playing cool. that down? That's really yeah, it's good. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Oh, my next comedy good. show is... Uh, I don't even know where I'm going, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> but you know you're going somewhere. Yeah. Where you at next, Jay? Uh, uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, on the 21st National Guard Armory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. So you performing for the National Guard? I don't know who's gonna be in that building, no, Tommy. It's but just if, at the the mic, if the mic, if it's gonna be uh, at the armory, right? At the okay. armory. Okay. You know, some places don't have a, a venue, so you got to, you know, you know how well they put a mic in some seats yeah. in there, we'll do it. Yeah, the money right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. All right, Steve, yeah. I want to stay on this uh, enlightenment uh, path that I've been on of late with my closing remarks. I want to remind people of something. And it's a spiritual message again. But God has a plan for you. He has a design plan for all of us. When we were all created, he had something in mind for us. But now, along the way, because we are more special than all the other creatures he created, we happen to be the only ones he created that he's given the power of choice to. So you have the choice to align yourself with God's plan or you can go your own way. I am here to tell you that it is always better to go his way. One of the things that was prohibiting me from going his way was I thought because of the way I was raised in the church that I was going to sit at the church seven days a week and go every night and and sit there and I was looking at people who had lives I didn't really aspire to, I didn't really want. And so I was fighting against that. But But once I aligned myself up with his will, his purpose for me was pretty good. His purpose for me was to become what I am today. I didn't know it. I thought he wasn't going to allow that because it didn't line up with everything that the church said. But God works in mysterious ways. 
God has a plan for you that's always better than the one you got. And, and it will allow you to have a, a, a lot of contentment in your life. But the thing about it is, what, since we have this power of choice, we also have to deal with the enemy. And we got the devil is out there and the devil got imps that work for him 24-7. But let me share you something with you. God's purpose is more powerful than the enemy's plan. All of you, every last one of us has been, someone has attempted to stop us. All of us, someone has attempted to bury us. All of us out here, somebody has attempted tempted to do you wrong, to bring you down, to stop you. But God's purpose is more powerful than the enemy's plan. All you got to do is align yourself with God. All you have to do is claim him like he claimed you. You got to know who you are and you got to know whose you are. And you've got to just know that and align yourself with that. And then it's nothing that the enemy can do to you. Nothing. I don't care how hard they try to bring you down, what lie they tell about you, how they go on tack you on social media. It don't matter what they say about you. Oh, his show ain't this. Or his, his show wasn't that. Or he ain't this. Or she ain't that. Oh, she ain't this on the radio. She don't hardly do this. When they get through, if you are in touch with your creator and you are living the best life you can, and notice I said the best life you can, not the perfect life, because you're not finna live that. You're not finna live no perfect life, and you're not finna live this life sin free. But if you align yourself with God, who is aware of the fact that there's none perfect, no, not one, he will put you under the protection of his wings. You just got to know who you are and whose you are. And once you line yourself up with your God, with your creator, with your faith, and your purpose, God's purpose is more powerful than the enemy's plan. There's nothing they can do to you. It don't matter what they say or how many times they say it. If you keep your eye on the prize and you keep your faith in your God, there is nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, they can do about it. I know this for a fact, but you don't have to believe me. It's in his word that he will cover you, that he will protect you, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It's all in there. Align yourself with the creator and go on about your business. And remember, God's purpose is more powerful than the enemy's plan. Those are my closing remarks today. Stay with it. Talk to God. He loved to hear from you. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 